Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Oxid Magic, and it's Jordan here. And we are carrying on our uh, top fives of Amon uh of what it's going to affect in various formats. And this time, we're discussing modern. Um, me and the boys, we've been getting into modern quite a lot recently. Uh, because of course we're attending GP Birmingham, which is uh, modern orientated. So it's good to have practice and get another meta in the format and various things like that. So to begin with, number five. Um, Anointed Procession. Uh, three mana white enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens, it creates double that instead. Wizards, what on earth were you thinking? Reprinting. No, no, you've effectively reprinted Parallel Lives, which is in green, and you've colour shifted it to white. Because, of course, you know, white doesn't have enough to, you know, doesn't create enough tokens already. Are you insane? It's mental. This in standard will be great anyway. Because especially with the new embalm mechanic, which brings things back as tokens anyhow. But in modern, black white tokens is a thing. But to be fair, mono white tokens. If I green white, there's many many token strategies. Hell, if I could have this in red, my goblins, would, I'd be ruining it for my goblins. It would be insanely good. Uh, I mean, turn four, yeah, but there's easy enough ways to cheat it out. In uh, you know, with various um, spells and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it is insanely good. Um, the fact is, is that Lingering Souls to oh, cast it, get four tokens, and cast it from the graveyard, you get another four. You can have eight power on the board for six mana. That's insanely good. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, a card to keep an eye on. And I think it token decks could go up in the modern format. If they do, um, various hits going to have to go into strategies such as board wipes, I mean personally for me the only answer I have to token strategies is uh, Ratchet Bomb, that's a great answer and uh, yeah so go from there so keep an eye on that. Number number four, Gideon of the Trials, one and two white, uh, Gideon with four, three loyalty, um, yeah he's the standard plus one, prevent damage from a source so great for, in, great for going against certain strategies um, zero, he makes him a dude, uh, he's a 4-4 this time, he's swinging for the hills, indestructible as always, bring the damage, blah blah blah. But then he has his zero emblem ability, which is insane, and of course he gets an emblem, which is as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, a Gideon, any Gideon Planeswalker, not just him, then you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game, which is effectively Platinum Angel for zero mana, for three. Insane value right there. Um, I'm just waiting, and it'll probably be Saffron Olive, it probably will, who creates a Gideon modern tribal deck, <laughs> which will probably run all the Gideons, and your idea is to get this out, turn three, cast it to zero, and then your opponent effectively can't win without dealing with Gideons, especially if you're running mono white style, and you've got um, Dawn Charm to prevent damage and stuff like that. Yeah, it will get insane very quickly. Um, Definitely one to watch for standard, but I think modern is where it's going to see a hell of an impact. And plus it joins, there's only, what, five other three mana planeswalkers? And they're all fairly decent, I mean, they, they all do a job and whatnot. So yeah, definitely something to uh, keep an eye on, I think. Uh, so yeah, well, move on from there. Number three, uh, Shadow of the Grave. This is one in the black, uh, it's an instant return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycle or discarded this turn. Um, so one works with the cycling deck, um, which isn't really a big thing in modern, but the benefit you get is that if you are a discard deck, and there are some there are some decks that go around that do do discard, this allows you to dump a lot of things, get, get, get them back, and you can dump them again for edit value, because there's now a few new creatures that are coming out in Amoket, they get, power, uh, they get extra uh, power and toughness boost for uh, uh, for you discarding cards. So you know, as long as you have a discard outlet, it can work very well. Um, definitely also good in the modern thing of your opponent thought seizes you or uh, Inquisition of Causal Lake after turn two. If you've got mana open, then they go, oh no, get rid of that, and you go, no, thank you, I'll have it back. So it's a bit of an answer to that, but obviously early game they're going to make you discard, and they are going to take the threats. But you know, once you've got Man are open for this, you can generally do things with it. It would be quite nice. So, moving on to number two. <laughs> number two, uh, Bone Picker. It is a three and a black, it's a bird, it's power three two, so Delver flipped. 
and uh, but it has flying and it has death touch, very sweet, and it will cost three less to cast if you if a creature has died if a creature has died this turn. Oh my god, this is insane. This is really good value. I mean, you could play this turn two. Um, basically, you know, if red black, if you fit, or even most removal strategies, if you remove something for one mana, and then you have this open again for another mana. Uh, a three-two death touch flyer is just sweet on the board. It has to be answered. You know, you hard swing through without trample and various things like that. So it's generally going to commandeer a removal spell. Fatal push will only hit this if they've cracked the fetch or various other strategies like that. So definitely, um, definitely one worth watching, I think. And it is going to be very sweet. And finally, number one. Uh, this has already uh, been talked about on various podcasts and stuff like that. And it's Harsh Mentor. It's one in a red, human cleric for a 2 2. And whenever an opponent activates the ability of an artifact, a creature, or a land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, then that then Harsh Mentor deals 2 damage to that player. Uh, this effectively damages massively to affinity decks. Um, but land, you know, if you want to make a man land, uh, again, they take two damage. Uh, fetch lands, again, they will take one for having to do the fetch and then two from him. And then, so effectively, if they've gone to get a, a, um, a, 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 a shock land into play as well, they could realistically take five damage just for having to do it. And that is insane value, it really is. Um, he's quite hefty in the price tag at the moment, and I think he'll come down because uh, obviously on how much the block gets open. Generally, the first block of a set gets open a hell of a lot more than the second block, so it'll be good to see what um, if his price does come down quite a lot, which would be rather nice. But definitely one to worth consider. I'm definitely considering putting him in my sideboard for against certain strategies, um, but whether it sort of works better or not, but definitely works something in like a, a burn deck quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested to see what uh, what happens with him. So that's it for this time, folks. Uh, so that is our five uh, top card predictions. Uh, let me know what you think of the comments. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what happens with the set. And catch you all soon. Goodbye. Hi, guys. Remember, if you like that video, please smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. Let's keep the MTG community growing here on, uh, on YouTube. And from this... Please check out our other playlists, we have plenty of other Magic the Gathering content from myself and the other boys at Oxhead Magic, and we will catch you all very soon.